welcome to Athar's Garage. In this video, I'll be working on the Team Associated B74.2 Bag 11. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our pistons out of this bag. I'm gonna leave the O-rings in this bag for now, just so that way I don't lose anything. Okay, so we have our shocks for the front, shocks for the rear. I'm just kind of setting stuff aside because um, I know we're going to need, you know, these are the common pieces that go on both sides. So there's two length shafts. So the longer shafts are going to be for the rears and the shorter shafts for the fronts. So. We're gonna need our pistons, our shafts. We're also gonna need four M2 by four button head cap screws, four M2.5 washers. So let's go ahead and do the fronts first. So the front shaft is gonna be 23 millimeters long and we need to use the two hole by 1.6 piston. So if you look closely, you'll see a 1.6 on the piston. A tip they recommend is to use a Sharpie to mark the piston so you know which one is, what size pistons you run. I don't do that because I know what pistons I run. Um, and I keep a setup sheet with me at all times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these washers, we're gonna go ahead and install it on the top of the shaft. The top of the shaft is where there's no threads on the outside, it's an internal thread. So this is the bottom of the shaft. So we're gonna go ahead and put the washer on. Then we're gonna install the 1.6 two hole piston and make sure that the 1.6 is facing up. Next, we're gonna install the M2 by four button head cap screw. And you wanna make sure that you apply a little bit of Loctite on there so it doesn't back out. I've actually seen this back out during a race for some people. So don't forget this step. And just slowly screw it into the shaft. You don't want it too tight because you can warp the piston itself. But I am gonna grab some shock pliers and just snug it up. Not too much pressure, just to get it snug. So if you tighten it too much, you'll deform the piston. And then I'm just gonna take a microfiber towel and wipe off any excess thread locker that's on there. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the other three, except we're gonna do, for the rear, we're gonna put a 1.7 piston in the rear. So the 1.7, you can see, is written 1.7. So now the piston and shock shafts are assembled can go ahead and prepare the shock bodies. So let's go ahead and do one. So you're gonna need your shock body. You're also gonna need a lot of the seals. You're gonna need all the seals and spacers in this bag. So I'm just gonna do one shock right now. Okay, so you're gonna need one large o-ring 
13 millimeter one. You're gonna need the shock cap o-ring, a, a smaller one, it's black. You're gonna need two X rings. And then you're gonna need some of these spacers. You're gonna need two hat bushings and one spacer. So these are the hat bushings. You can see they kind of look like a hat. And these are just spacers. There are only four spacers. And there's, so these are the four spacers here. And then you have eight hat bushings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some shock oil and we're going to put a light coating of silicone fluid on the o-ring and then we're going to carefully install the o-ring on top of the shock shaft on top of the shock body just like so so we're going to do the same thing with this o-ring And we're going to install this o-ring on the bottom of the shock body just like so so we have our shock hat bushings the spacer and two x-rings we're also going to be using this protec rc premier blue o-ring grease um, I haven't used this, but other racers that I race with swear by it, so I wanted to give it a try. You can also use the green slime that Associated recommends, but um, this was on the this was at the hobby shop. The green slime wasn't, and this was a lot cheaper too. So, so what we're gonna do is we're going to install the shock hat bushing and we're going to install the smaller diameter facing down so that small diameter is supposed to fit in the shock body hole and it kind of centers it so next we're going to install the x-ring and don't be shy when putting any grease on the o-rings so I am going to cover mine up completely and I'm going to go ahead and install that next we're going to install the shock spacer then we're going to install another x-ring same thing here, just going to pile on the grease and make sure that it's nicely lubricated and then go ahead and install that. So you want to make sure it's nicely lubricated because it's going to do two things. Um, it's going to fill in any gaps that may cause leaks uh, and it'll help prevent the leak. Um, if you use shock oil, it might swell. I don't know if I've actually experienced that or not. And you also want to make sure when you install your shock shafts that you install, you have some lubrication. So when you put these threads through the X rings, it doesn't tear anything. And then lastly, we're going to install the other shock hat bushing. And this time in this orientation, this view that you're seeing, the small diameter is going to be facing up and that diameter gets locked into place with the shock bottom cap so you can go ahead and take one of these and partially thread it on i'm not going to tighten it all the way because what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave a small gap you can feel when it Kind of touches the o-ring so i'm going to just back off just a little bit 
So I'm gonna install the shock shaft first and then I'll tighten this down. So that way there's not a lot of squish and I don't wanna end up cutting any of the seals in there. So this one is ready. Let's go ahead and assemble the rest of them. The shock bodies are assembled. Now we can assemble or install our shock shafts and pistons. So the front shock is going to install with one nylon spacer. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that onto the shaft. And they recommend either using shock fluid or some green slime or the O-ring grease on the threads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use some shock oil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up all the threads. And what I'm gonna do is when I install the shaft, I'm gonna rotate clockwise. So slowly push, rotate, and there we go. And then all I'm gonna do now is wipe off any excess lubrication that came out. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten the bottom shock cap. And you can get it basically hand tight and you're good. And very low friction, moves nice and smooth. It's exactly what we want. All right. And then for the rear, the rear shock does not have any nylon spacers that go in it. So we basically do the same thing for the rear. Just apply a little bit of shock fluid through the threads. Make sure they're nicely covered. When you install, rotate clockwise and slowly push out. And there we go. And then just wipe off any excess and tighten the shock bottom cap. And go ahead and do the other two and then we can move forward. So the next step is to get the shock rod ends and pivot balls installed. So we can go ahead and grab those. So there's three different lengths for the shock eyelets. So there's a zero. It's gonna be hard to see on camera. There's a zero. This one is a plus two. And this one is a plus four. So for the fronts, we're gonna use plus twos. And for the rears, we're gonna use zero. So we'll get two of each. Can't say enough nice things about these flesh cutters. Um, I don't have to sand or trim or anything. All right, so for the front shock, we're gonna use two spacers and no spacers in the rear. So for the front shock, it's gonna go ahead and install the two spacers. And then we know for the fronts, we're gonna use the longer shock eyelets. So those are the plus two, and the rears are gonna be the zero offset. We're also going to need four pivot balls. So we can go ahead and put these together. And what I would suggest here is put some oil, grease, or some shock fluid on the threads and that'll help install 
these eyelets. And probably a good idea to hold it with some shock pliers while you do this. So the front stroke, so when it's fully out, is supposed to be 22 millimeters. So you can take your calipers and you can measure until you have 23 millimeters. So this one's good. And lastly, we can go ahead and install a pivot ball and carefully note, it looks like maybe one side is larger or it has a bevel that will help install the pivot ball. So just take note of that. It's kind of hard to see, um, but it looks like the matte surface here is a smaller side and then this side is a little bit more shiny. It's gonna be hard to see on camera, but you wanna insert the you wanna insert the pivot ball from this side. Okay. So for the rears basically gonna do the same thing install the zero shock eyelet no spacers and the stroke on the rear is going to be 27.5 millimeters all right so i'm gonna go ahead and finish these two and then we'll move forward Now, since all of these are assembled, we can grab a shock stand. I just 3D printed one and looks like that'll work fine. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we know that these two are the rears on this side and these two are gonna be the fronts. So we can go ahead and fill up with shock fluid. The fronts are going to need 45 weight and the rears are going to need 35 weight. So grab those from the kit and go ahead and fill up. I'll probably leave about one or two millimeters from the top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stroke the shock a few times because there's going to be some air bubbles that are going to be underneath the piston so carefully come up you don't want the piston to come out of the fluid so maybe leave it you know a millimeter or two below the fluid and then what i like to do is i like to actually rotate the shaft and sometimes the piston will turn and you'll see some bubbles coming out So now what I'll do is I'm going to rotate the shaft from the bottom and extend the shock out. I'm going to do this a few times for each shock and make sure that I get any air that might be trapped underneath the piston to come out. So I'm gonna do that for all the shocks. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it for about 30 minutes to an hour. And then I'll come back and complete the shocks and the bleeding process.
All right, so we're gonna set these aside for now and let the air bubbles escape. And while we do that, we're gonna go ahead and prepare our shock collars with the O-rings that we have here and also prepare the shock caps. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take some shock fluid and put a light coat on each one of these O-rings. And then you're gonna install it in the groove that's inside this collar. So the, this O-ring does, what this O-ring does is allow this threaded collar to not move with vibration. And then the shock oil, what it does is protect the O-ring from getting cut and allow easier adjustment when you are threading on the collar or making adjustments for your ride height. These are gonna be ready to install once the shocks are done. We're also going to need to prepare the shock caps. So we can grab our shock caps and get them off the parts tree. And then trim these if needed. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and thread in the screws. These screws are M2 by four button head cap screws. So we're just gonna go ahead and start it. We don't want it to um, go in all the way, just maybe get it two turns in and that'll be good. Um, Cause it's easier to, you know, have the screw in the shock cap when you're bleeding rather than putting this on and, and while you're trying to bleed the shock. So it'll be easier to do this. So the shock caps are ready. Next, we can get the spring cup ready. So in the front, we're gonna use the five millimeter spring cup. And in the rear, we're gonna use the zero. So I am trying to see if there's any markings on here and I don't think there are. So you'll know this is gonna be the zero, this is the five and this is the nine. So we need two of these and two of these. And then trim if necessary. If this is a carpet car, you definitely wanna do this uh, you want to clean it up since this is down low it might catch some fuzz depending on the type of track you're running on so you wouldn't want that so now the zeros go in the rear and the fives go in the front so now we have everything ready so when the shocks are done. We're just waiting for the bubbles to come out. So once the bubbles are out, we're gonna stroke each one again a few times. So there's, I still see some air bubbles, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stroke each one a few more times to see if any more bubbles come out. And I do see some more bubbles are coming out. So I'm gonna wait about 30 minutes or so, and come back and check on this. For me, it'll be 30 minutes. For you, it'll be a few seconds. All right, so the shocks have been sitting for quite some time. I made sure there's no air bubbles left in there. So now we can go ahead and complete the shocks by installing the shock collars, shock caps, and spring perches and springs. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, 
we got the screws started so it'll be easy when we install it so what we're going to do is i'm going to just take a screw out and leave it on the on driver and what we're going to do now is i'm going to put a drop of oil in the shock cap let's go ahead and do the fronts first so i'm going to use some 45 weight oil make sure you have a rag on hand because this is going to get quite messy So I'm going to go ahead and fill up my shock. All right, so I've got a shock cap. I'm going to go ahead and put some 45 weight oil in the shock cap. Just put a little bit in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and take one of my front shocks and go ahead and put the shock cap on. And you'll see some shock fluid coming out as you tighten down. Just wanna... So the kit comes with a shock wrench and you can use this center section to hold on to the shock as you tighten it down. So the shock cap is on. What we're going to do now is we're going to slowly compress the shock and we're going to see some excess fluid and air come out the top. So what I like to do here is I just wrap a microfiber towel around just like so. I don't cover up the hole and then I'm gonna slowly compress the shock. All right, the shock is fully compressed. I'm just gonna go ahead and soak up any of the fluid that came out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and install my bleeder screw. And just use very light pressure when you're installing the screw. Um, you don't want to strip it. So as soon as you feel it shoulder up, it's good. And in the manual, they basically say the shock is done, but I go a bit further. I don't think this is done because if you start adding pressure, you might see that it's not a dead shock. So what I like to do now is I'll basically move the shock up and down quickly, you know, maybe 10 to 20 times, see if any pressure builds up and it looks like there's no pressure building up. So call, you can call this good. So if you see you do that, you know, you pump it you know, 20 times or so, and then the shock comes out, then you need to bleed it again because there could be some air left in there. So this one's good. We can go ahead and do the others. Right, so moving on to the rears. So I'm going to use 35 weight fluid in the shock caps. All right. So it looks like the shock bodies are done. They're pretty much dead shocks. So now what we can do is install our shock collars. And since we already installed the O-rings, all we got to do is, what I like to do is actually rotate it counterclockwise. You have to push it towards the threads and then you'll kind of feel it 
you'll feel the start of the thread and then you can go ahead and put your collars on. Okay. So the front is supposed to have 7.5 millimeters between the top of the shock flange and the shock collar. So you can go ahead and check that. right at 7.5. So you can go ahead and set the other one. You can put on the rears. The rears are supposed to have 2.5 millimeters of gap between the shock collar and the top of the shock. This will all change um, once you do your setup after the build, but I'm going to go ahead and just set mine up to the build because this is all going to be dependent on the weight of your electronics and your battery, but I'll do this for now. Then I'll adjust once I get everything installed. So the shock collars are set. We can now install our springs. The rear is going to use the blue spring and I like to point the indicator or color um, of the spring towards the top of the shock and then we're going to go ahead and install our spring perch on the bottom or and all you got to do is line up the gap in the cup and just like that just slide onto the shaft and then push it down onto the rod end or shock eyelet. So this one is done. The fronts are going to use the red spring. So point the red towards the top and the bottom is using a five millimeter spring cup. So So that's it for bag 11. Stay tuned for bag 12. Don't put away the hardware that came in bag 11 because some of that is going to be used to install the shocks onto the chassis. So we're not going to put our shocks away just yet because we will install those soon. And then don't get rid of this parts tree because these ball ends uh, are going to be used in bag 12. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Nothing really to report in terms of issues. Everything will, went together smoothly. The shocks feel amazing. Um, so I'm excited to see how these perform on the track since they are new to Team Associated for the 13 millimeter shocks. But thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay tuned for the next video where I tackle bag 12. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.